Many people find that their energy and mental clarity improve when they're on a ketogenic diet. But if that's not your reality, there are some common keto mistakes that we're gonna cover in this video. Okay, so the first thing I think we should get out of the way is keto flu. And uh, if, if you're familiar with keto at all, you probably have heard the term keto flu. It's not what we're talking about in this video, but it's worth mentioning um, because it is something that is very common at the beginning of starting a low carb or a keto journey. Uh, and, and that is simply because you are robbing your body of its energy source that it is used to using, right? right. So if you've gone from a high carb diet uh, and to a very low carb ketogenic diet, well, your body's not getting that glucose that it's easily burns for energy. And that is going to leave you fatigued. It's going to leave you hungry, possibly. It's going to possibly give you some headaches and things like that. Um, that is keto flu. Fortunately, it's usually right at the beginning and it only lasts for a couple of days to maybe a week and it usually, and, and it will self right itself. Right. Your body is going to figure out how to, to create the enzymes and processes to efficiently take that fat and make it into ketones for energy. Um, and it can take anywhere, you know, a few days to a couple of weeks. It just yeah, kind of depends. But when, it, but when it does, now you have yep, a, a usable energy source yep. again. Just got to keep it going. Though. Yeah. What we're talking about is you've been on a keto diet for a while and you're not feeling very perky, right? So perky. one of the, one of the most common reasons and the easiest fixes is, is fixing your electrolytes. That's right. So electrolytes are basically minerals with uh, electrical charges. And, uh, you know, the basic ones are, are sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride. Uh, and they help with all sorts of processes in the body. They help nerve conduction. They help muscle contraction. And they also help with the body fluid right. balance, right? And the, and the fluid in your blood vessels and all that. So being dehydrated can cause a lot of feelings of fatigue. Mm -hmm. So your body is going to flush out a lot of these minerals Mm -hmm. when you go on a low carb diet because your glucose is low and your insulin is low the, the kidneys automatically kind of just start flushing some water out if you're even a little bit dehydrated um that can cause an uh you know and really immense change in your your energy level yeah and even myself uh you know now i don't do keto but i do low carb and i've been on low carb for years now uh, but every morning i will get up in the morning and i will just take 12 drops of this, literally drop it into my blessed and grateful mug and uh, fill it up with water and chug it down. It's the first thing that goes in me in, in the morning. Right. Uh, it's a little briny, but you know, I've kind of gotten used to it. And, and it's a great way to rehydrate. We just naturally get dehydrated overnight. Yeah. Uh, so I, I basically ensure, and, and this has all of the important electrolytes that Keith talked about, uh, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and chloride. Yep. And I will say that I'm not as consistent as you with that. Um, but like after a hockey game or if I'm out working and I'm, I'm very sweaty and hot, um, I'll usually take a shot of that, but I tend to put a lot of salt and other stuff on my yeah. food and sea salt yeah. and whatever. And, and, uh, so I always kind of figure I'm okay, but, but yeah, uh, well, you always figure you're okay. So. <laughs> I always figure I'm okay. That's right. So another thing that I notice a lot of times with people that, uh, that I'm coaching through and getting into a low carb lifestyle is that you go way too low in calories. And, and I think this is, there's two reasons for this really. Um, one is that, you know, when we get, when we decide to dedicate ourselves to something uh, and we start to see results because low, uh, keto produces really rapid results, we think, wow, this is great. Let me push, push it a little bit harder and just go lower in calories. Um, so what you're actually doing is you're inviting in a lot of fatigue when, when you do that. But another reason that is kind of, uh, one of these crazy things, uh, that we didn't used to see in dieting, uh, when you go on a low carb, high fat diet, you do not feel that hungry. And I have had people say to me, you know, I'm a little bit worried. I'm not, I just, I, I have this meal and I just, I don't, I'm not hungry for it. High fat meals, high fat foods are very hunger satiating. And when you cut the carbs, particularly the refined carbs, your blood sugar level stays nice and steady. So you don't go up through those dips and valleys where you get really hungry. Or hangry. Yeah. As it's kind of been come to known. Yeah. Right. That, that's a whole fourth meal uh, uh, Taco Bell thing. <laughs> Did they start that? I have, they may have. I don't know. Yeah.
There's a moment at night when all you want is fourth meal. Yeah, but it, but it, it's definitely it. a thing. But um, yeah, so low calorie. I mean, you know, and we've and we've been taught for a long time that if you're going to lose weight, you got low calorie. Go low calorie, yeah. right? And cut the calories, and that's still. It's still back in our minds that well, I think. Well, cal- calories are important, but you self-regulate your calorie intake much, much better right. when you are eating to stabilize your blood sugar, and you do that through ketogenic diet or low-carb right. diet. And it's important, too. You track your intake uh, to know what your calorie level is and your macronutrient levels, and then make sure that it's, it's okay to have a low-calorie day every now and then, mm-hmm. but just don't string a bunch of them together. You know, that, that's yeah. going to cause not just that fatigue and, and that issue, not having them enough calories, but it can also cause some other issues, you know, metabolism dropping sure. and things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, and, and that goes right into our, our next tip. And, and maybe this is part of like our traditional understanding of dieting as well. But what I see a lot of times is that uh, people will go from a low fat diet because that's what was the prevailing diet mindset for the past 60 years, right? Uh, Eat a low fat diet. Well, they go from a low fat diet to a low carb diet, but in the meanwhile, they never boost up their fat. And, And it's a hard thing to get through your head, especially when you're old, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I was going. I was going for myself, but then I. But yeah. uh, anyway. Um, well, somebody will comment on it. <laughs> uh, I should be nicer to you in these videos. Yeah, right. I think that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. But it it is a hard thing for us to get through. It was hard for me to adopt that. Yeah. Um, putting, you know, allowing yourself to put butter on vegetables even is is something that's hard to do. I think even buying, you know, not automatically buying lean meats. Yes. And things like that, you know, and going for the more fatty cuts that we've just been, you know, all these years told that, you know, stay away from those, yeah. right? And yeah. eat turkey and chicken and, you know, all these things. Yeah. If you're doing that and you're cutting your carbs, you're just not getting that fat. Yeah. You know what's, what's interesting, and I've never really thought this through much before, but um, the fattier cuts of meat, and, and even when we're talking about like ground beef or chicken thighs compared to chicken breast, which is chicken thighs are higher in fat. They're cheaper. At least they are right now until, until, yeah. until, until this video over. comes out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think we have that much influence, but so, you know, have that benefit as well. Maybe that'll help you get back, get into the higher sure. fat. Yeah, higher it's a little fat bit more affordable. Um, but if, but the, the, the reason we bring that up in this video is, you know, if you're eating low fat and you're eating low carb, well, where's your body getting the energy from? Yeah, it's just, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're robbing it of of both of the 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 really fuel sources that your body's made to use. Yep. So, um, go low carb, bump up your fat. Yeah, and like I think Keith said earlier, it, um, that uh, you know if you want to get your body to burn fat, you have to feed it fat. It has to uh, produce the enzymes and uh, pathways and processes that it needs to burn fatty acids. But if there are n- the fats aren't there and they're not coming in as fuel, your body's not going to go through that transition. Right, or you so, could be burning some lean, lean tissue, which you mm-hmm. know, is, a, is a double-edged yeah. sword, so. Right, yep. and the, the last tip we wanted to throw in here, you know, if you're feeling some fatigue on your keto diet, check what your food choices are. Are you leaning very heavily on keto snacks and meal replacement drinks and things like that? Yeah. They might get you at your macronutrient level that you're trying to reach, but there's no comparison for the um, nutrient profile that you get in whole foods. Yeah, these these things are going to be highly processed. Um, They typically have you know, artificial sweeteners, you know, that, that can affect your insulin level without you knowing it. They may not affect your glucose level. Uh, they can stimulate your appetite. They can make you eat more than you need to eat. I mean, you know, you grab a keto bar or a, you know, meal replacement shake. Uh, it's very convenient. It's very, you know, you can eat them pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Pretty easy to have another one, you know, and then you're just throwing, then you're starting to throw things off. Right. So, um, you know, if, if you're, if you are feeling that fatigue on your keto diet, Please don't be turning to those things. Yeah. And it's not hard to go the whole food route when you're eating good high, high fat foods. You know, just we're going into summertime here. Uh, it's a great time to pull out the grill yep. and make meat and vegetables on the grill. Fatty meat. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't have to go with the skinless, boneless chicken breast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can um, taste it. It's just so dry in my mouth. Yeah, I can just well, taste it right now. But, uh, you know, go. you can go ahead and have a, have a steak and, and enjoy the, the good things, eggs. Saute some vegetables and butter and yeah. Yeah, yeah, good to go. It's good to eat. So uh, if you if you are wondering what are good low carb choices, we do have a downloadable list that we will leave links here for you that you can 100 grab. low carb it foods. It is, in one page. Very yeah. nice and convenient. You can put it on your refrigerator. Yeah. So we will leave links for that. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel and we will see you in the next video. See you next time.